The ones that were sent out, though, in January, February, and March, are, were they designed to detect the, uh, the new strains that have come out in the last three or four months? No, you know, the um, authorization by the FDA for those tests were based on studies that were done prior to the Omicron variant's appearance in our uh, country. So they do not specifically, um, or they were not specifically designed for those variants. There has been concern that those variants are different enough from the uh, variants that the tests were designed around that uh, they were less sensitive than we would want them to be. They're still helpful, but people need to keep in mind that there could be a false negative. There's two ways to address that. If a person has symptoms and they do a COVID test and it's negative, we encourage them then to seek a PCR test. A PCR test is much more likely to pick up the virus when it's present. The other option is to wait 24 or even 48 hours, maybe optimal, to retest themselves. And if they have two subsequent to sequential negative tests like that, it's more likely to be a true negative than just having one test. For those who are exposed don't and, and are not showing symptoms, can you, can you still use that methodology with these home tests? Well, I want to tell you that today the CDC put new guidance up on their website. It went up at two o'clock um, Arkan uh, Arkansas time, and I have not had an opportunity to look. I would encourage people to follow their guidance. My recollection of what they were going to put up was that people who don't have symptoms shouldn't test, but I would encourage you just to check out their website and um, inform the public about that. I just haven't had a chance to look at it. There is also a question of if you do the home test and it is positive, are you supposed to report it to your department or what do you do with that positive test? So we are not asking people to report positive tests. We are asking people if they are positive to inform the people that they have exposed to COVID so that those people can take steps to um, prevent themselves from spreading it if they develop the illness. So people who are positive should isolate themselves for five days. In their home, they should stay away from other people. And whenever they're around other people for those five days, they need to be wearing a mask. But to the extent possible, they should be away from other people. So and that really that really hasn't changed much. <laughs> No, that hasn't changed. And then people should continue to wear a mask for 10 days. After they have um, completed those five days and they're feeling well and haven't had fever for 24 hours, then they can wear a mask and do what they need to do. If they're still feeling ill, if they still have a fever, or they could test themselves. If they're still positive, they need to continue to isolate for 10 days. Are there tests now that you can get at home that do detect the new strains? Are the ones being made now able to do that? They are the same as before. So they can, in some cases, detect the strain. It may depend on how much what the viral load, how much virus people have in their uh, oral cavity, you know, or in their nose where they're doing the test. Uh, so it might depend on the viral load, whether they can pick it up or not. Uh, but it's going to be important for people, if they have symptoms of illness, don't go to work and don't go to school. Even if it's a negative test, 
even if it's not COVID, we don't want people taking RSV or flu or other respiratory viruses to work or to school. Is there anything there that, you know, that, that your guys are maybe kind of biting your fingernails over as the school year starts? Well, at this point in time, most children have been exposed or had COVID. They've either been vaccinated or they've had, so almost all of them, about 80% of them have some immunity, which is a very different situation than where we were a year ago. So I'm not especially worried about children being in school. I'm worried more about children not being in school and the impact on uh, mental health and the, the education and development of these children. So I encourage people to be in school whenever possible, but take steps to prevent the spread and help schools stay open. We strongly encourage parents to consider vaccinating their children if they haven't been vaccinated already, and then to be sure and keep them home if their kids develop any kind of a respiratory illness. Okay, Dr. Dale, hey, thank you so much. Appreciate you joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Appreciate it.